Have you ever heard the term metadata in some conversation and were too embarrassed to ask what is metadata all about? My name is Alexander Edinger from the Gieses Leibniz Institute for Social Sciences and today I bring to you the basics of metadata and documentation with a special focus on survey data. So in this video we will learn the basics of metadata and documentation with a special emphasis on unstructured metadata at a study level and at the variable level. But first things first, what is metadata? Basically metadata tells a story about data and the story for you and for the later end user of your data. Questions that are central for metadata and documentation are, for example, who conducted the study, with what purpose, uh, with what population, what do all the questions and the codes mean in the data set, and these are center stage for understanding and uh, replicating what you have done with your data on your survey project. Why are metadata important? First of all, it helps people finding the data and making your data more accessible. Second, it helps people who will try to use your data um, to understand the data and make sense what is the data all about and if the data fits their research purposes. Third, it facilitates the reuse and the sharing of your data. And finally, it provides standards for data citation to make sure you get the credit you need and you deserve for producing um, the data in your project. We distinguish two levels of metadata. The first level is metadata at the study level. It entails information which describes the whole project or the, the whole survey project you conducted. And the second level are the variable level. It entails information more specific um, to the variables and the questions you ask in your project. Metadata can be structured or unstructured. Structured metadata pertains to some industry-like standards for producing metadata which are machine-readable. Some very famous industry standards you maybe heard of are Dublin Core, or the Data Documentation Initiative Standards, or DDI. So the vast majority of um, metadata and documentation will be a kind of unstructured data. Unstructured metadata entails a lot of information you produce during the course of your survey project. For example, the survey instrument or questionnaire you're using, the methodological report or field report, or sometimes called technical report, uh, which describes um, the background of your study and uh, how you conduct the study. And third, the codebook, which describes the uh, data set more specific at a variable level. Just a summary the first part of a video. So metadata are important, especially for you, that people can find your data and use your data. It contains a lot of unstructured information, for example, questionnaires, reports, codebooks, and some other materials uh, tagged to your research project. And what is important to know is that structured metadata like DDI or Dublin Core are more important for professional data specialists or archival repositories uh, and less important for ordinary survey researchers. So let the people in your trusted archive do the work on uh, structured metadata for you. A last point to emphasis is that the scope of documentation depends on your financial and personal resources. So make sure that you create a research data management plan in advance and apply for sufficient grants to cover the cost of data documentation and processing. In the second part of the video, we talk about um, documentation at the study level. At the study level, the main focus is about the general context in which the data were created and the methodological steps in generating the data. We distinguish between three important elements for metadata documentation at the study level. First is the questionnaire or survey instrument. Second is the technical report or methodological report. And third are any other elements which are tied to your survey project like any stimuli, advanced letters, uh, interviewer selection grids, and so on. So the first element is the documentation of the survey instrument. Make sure to include the original questionnaire and any other materials used during fieldwork processes. Another important point is to document the fieldwork questionnaire as used by the survey firm. 
Use screenshots, for example, from the service software to detect any difference between the original questionnaire and the questionnaire who was in the field. Third, make sure to include any respondent materials, which I said were advanced letters, show cards, consent forms or any experimental stimuli you use. The methodological report, also known as field reports or technical reports, should provide the researcher with an overview of the survey design as well as the collection and statistical processing of the data to be analyzed. This in turn should enable the researcher to assess the quality and analytical potential of the data. It sounds trivial, but make sure to include a front matter for your technical report or methodological report. It should contain a study title, the principal investigators, or any funding you receive for your research project. So let's take a look at common mistakes or errors in the terms of the total survey error approach, which might appear during your survey research project and how it pertains to different sections in your methodological report. The first question is for what purpose were the data collected? This should be um, included in a report section called objectives and design. Second, how were the respondents selected? This pertains to a report section called target population and sampling. This is important to understand any coverage errors or sampling errors or unit non-response errors that might occur during your sampling process. Another question is how were the data collected? Describe them in the report section called modes of data collection. What information was collected? In this section, describe the survey instrument you're using. This is important to understand because the survey instrument construction is related to any respondent measurement errors or an item non-response errors that might occur. Very important is also to know who has collected the data, when and where. Include this information in a report section called fieldwork. These are related to interviewer-related measurement errors. How were the data edited, coded and weighted? Include this information in a section called data processing. And finally, were provisions of data protection respected? This is a very important topic, which tend to be overlooked in some methodological reports, so include any information on data protection and ethical issues in your report. In the objectives and design section of your report, describe the background of your research project, the objectives, and the basic research design of your survey, for example, a cross-sectional, a trend or a panel survey. In the target population and sampling report section, describe any eligibility criteria, the sampling frame you used, how were respondents selected at each sampling stage, and describe any clustering or stratification you applied. In the section on data processing, describe how the data were edited, cleaned up in general, how open-ended questions were coded, and the creation of different type of weights. In the data protection section, please describe the documentation of the informed consent and any measures to protect respondent privacy, for example, the aggregation of variables. In this video, you've learned about the basics of metadata, why are they important, the basics of metadata documentation at the study level and at the variable level. So in future, you will surely never get embarrassed again in conversations about metadata.